Hi everyone, welcome back from spring break. Today we are going to be learning and reading how we can be asking and answering questions while we read. Before we start, I'm going to play a quick video for us. Asking and answering questions. When we read, we ask and answer questions about the text. This helps us become better readers because it makes us think about what we're reading. Questions are sentences that ask for information. Many questions start with who, what, when, where, why, or how. Questions end with a question mark. When you read a book, you can think of questions before you read, while you read, and after you read. Before you read, you might wonder questions like, who will be in this story? Or, what will happen? While you read, you might wonder questions like, why did that happen? Or, what will happen next? After you read, you might wonder questions like, how are the characters feeling? Or, what would happen if the story continued? When you are finished reading, you should be able to answer questions about what you read. Some questions you might answer could be, who were the characters in the story? Where and when did the story take place? And what happened in the beginning, middle, and end of the story? Sometimes you'll need to look back in the story to find the answers. If you ask and answer questions before, during, and after you read, you will become a great reader. Thanks for watching. So, while you're reading, a few questions that you should be asking are the W questions. So, notice that all of these questions start with the letter W. Who, what, when, where, why, and then the last question is how. So, the first question, who. Who are the characters or the person that they're talking about in the story? If there are characters, <clears throat> what is the action that is happening? What's happening in the story? So if you think about a story that we read this year, you know, what were the characters doing? What happened actually in the story? When did it take place? The morning? Night? Did it say a specific time? Can you actually think about maybe a time um, throughout history that maybe it's taking place? Where? Where is it taking place? At a school? At home? Outside? Why are some of these things happening? And how? It's a number or a way something is done. So look at this. This looks like a milk plus a glass. And now he has, it looks like a milkshake, but maybe just a glass of milk. So how did he do that? How did things happen like that? How did it get done? So these are the questions to ask while you're reading. So if you look here, now we have a story. So I can already start thinking about who are we going to talk about in the story? Well, there's no who, but there's a what. We have a dinosaur. We're going to talk about a dinosaur in this story. Where is this taking place? Well, does it look like it's taking place inside or outside? I think inside. Maybe a museum, because that's where we know dinosaurs are. When? Hmm, I'm not sure we can say when, unless we read a little bit into it. We just have to read a little bit more. Um, so we did who, we did what, when, where. We said it's probably in a museum. And why? Now why would somebody want to read about dinosaurs? Maybe it's to learn a little more. So I'm going to read it really quick. How do we learn about dinosaurs? We use fossils. They tell us about the past. They are dinosaur fossils. What kind of dinosaur fossils? They are bones. They are prints. There are teeth. There are eggs. There are nests. How are they found? Scientists dig. They keep them safe. Scientists study them. They use the bones. They fit them together. Some bones may be missing. How do scientists build skeletons? 
They use other animals. They look at their bones. Scientists learn from skeletons. Some dinosaurs walked, some flew. Footprints helped. They tell how they moved. Some were slow, some were fast. Dinosaur teeth are helpful. They tell us what they ate. Sharp teeth were for meat. Flat teeth were for plants. Dinosaur eggs tell us about babies. Some dinosaurs sat on their eggs. What happened to dinosaurs? Scientists don't know. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to answer some questions. Now remember, when we're answering our questions, we have to restate our question. We have to say it again. So why do scientists study dinosaurs? If you're not sure, we go back to the text. So I'm going to look for some keywords like dinosaurs. How do we learn about dinosaurs? So I'm going to keep reading until I can answer this question. Why do scientists study dinosaurs? We use fossils. They tell us about the past. Hmm. Think about that. So why would a scientist study dinosaurs? I think it's to maybe learn about the past. So I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to want to type my answer. And I'm going to restate. So I'm going to use words from the question. Scientist, study dinosaurs to learn about the past. There we go. I have my first question done. So what do fossils teach us about? Hmm. I see a word in here. Fossils, that may be a keyword I can look for. We use fossils. They tell us about the what kind of dinosaurs fossils? Okay, so let me go back to the question. What do fossils teach us about? Hmm. Well, they have prints and teeth and eggs. Well, those are just telling me the type of fossils. Let me go look down a little bit. They keep the bones safe. They study them. They fit together. You know, I'm actually thinking about here. Scientists learn from the skeleton whether they walk, they flew, they how, how they moved, if they were slow, if they were fast, what they ate. So I'm thinking that what do fossils teach us? They teach us about how dinosaurs lived. Fossils teach us about how the dinosaurs lived. And there's my... There's my answer. Notice how I restated. Start with a capital, end with a period. Now, what you guys are going to do is you are going to read this tiny article about giant pandas. And then when you are finished, you have five questions to answer. Five questions. Now, I can tell you, all of the answers are going to be in here. Five questions. You only need to write one sentence for each. And when you're done, you can email them to your teacher.